they felt that they needed to start the procedure all over again, just through a different path. Okay, the procedure was a success. But get this, after the procedure, they told me, I have to lay perfectly still for six hours. Well, man, I just spent three days in bed you know, other than to get up to go to the bathroom, and I was already, you know, my bones were already aching in a bit. So I bitched for the entire six hours. All right, the next morning I get up, and they release me from the hospital. So I go home, and I'm thinking about what am I going to have to do to recover from this. The first thing I wanted to do was just sit back and watch the Celtics play a game of basketball on the TV. So I moved the TV a little bit closer. It was only a little 17-inch TV. And I moved it closer. But it was Christmas, and the TV wires and the uh, Christmas tree wires got entangled. And I dropped the TV on my left hand. That was the hand that had the IV in it for about three days. And I was also on blood thinners. So my hand swelled up to the size of a basketball. In fact, they stopped the game on TV because they were looking for the basketball, and lo and behold, there it was on the top of my hand. So we had to go to the emergency room again. We called the ambulance. And when I got back from the emergency room, I'm thinking, man, i got to make some changes. I've got to reinvent myself. You know, I was close to 65 years old and a little bit overweight, and I'm thinking, what do I got to do to make some changes for the rest of my life here? So I came up with a plan to reinvent myself. I called it my reinvention action plan. It actually had 10 different programs in it. One of them was a nutrition program. Well, my friend Tom Riddle, who's shooting a uh, video here, you know, we got online and he told me that perhaps I should become a vegan. I said, a vegan? What is that? So he explained what it is, and he recommended two books. Uh, one was called The China Study, and the other one was uh, by a Dr. Eccleston. And I read these two books, and I listened to Tom, and I, I became a vegan. I'm not the only vegan in the world. In fact, the other night, Bill Clinton was on, and he's on a plant-based diet himself. And he highly recommends it. And it's changed his life. He's lost quite a bit of weight like I have. I've lost about 40 pounds, you know, and I feel great. And according to Bill Clinton, he says that 85% of the people who have a, who have a plant-based diet pretty much are able to overcome any of, their, uh, any of the symptoms that they've had. And I said, well, that sounds terrific. So do I. That's what I want to do. So I'm doing particularly fine, and I'm a teacher and an educator. And you know that 47% of the people who end up in the hospital with some type of a heart problem, once they leave the hospital, don't do anything other than perhaps take their meds. You know, they, they gain weight. They, would you believe they continue smoking and drinking? Don't exercise? So I'm talking to these people. And a lot of them are saying stuff like, ah, when it's over, it's over. When it's your time, it's your time. Your time is up. I had a friend named Johnny, and he smoked for 50 years, and he was okay. So I'm going, yeah, but if you're, you're just gambling that you're going to be lucky. You know, and if you're a gambler, I'm also a gambler, but I'm a good gambler, I'm telling him. I said, you have to try to reduce the odds. You know, do things like exercise, Eliminate some stress in your life, and primarily change that diet that you're on. But they're not listening to me. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to come up with some ideas to help them. And I'm just wondering if any of you folks out there might have some ideas. You might have somebody in your own family, uh, a friend, who you, you've also tried to convince to make some changes in their life. And they just, uh, they basically won't do it. Uh, I'm just, uh, if you have any ideas out there, maybe you can just send them in to me and I'll try to put something together with the program that I'm developing and see if it helps.
So that's pretty much all I've got to say during this session. I'd like to thank you all for your attention and have a nice day. Bát nhóm bát xôn xóa cung ở lưu lục xây xa cho thầm mây mà đoàn tiết video xài phía dụng video bánh mấy nhí chìa bạch xa ổng lê Bọn tay nhóm bát nâng xông mình bỏ bài tế Rồi hơi về mình tách Sở rộp xe cái đây tới cư lục độc tổ đoàn rộp bí số Bạn cư chiên nẹ chùm ngư Đòi xa ca đòi xa miền khlanh nâng nông chìm chá ơn Hãy luôn có trở từ miệng thuộc cao về cạn nơi mình tìm về nữa Hãy mình tỏa bị chạy mà quên luôn có khai từ trên nẹ chui bóng phư đó là ở lúc lúc rơi Hãy dù đất ngọng bì ca thay ra xa sọc cập hiệp Thà ta thua vầy khát đây là dường ai thua sọc cập hiệp dường bàn lõ Đối chứ ca hạt bàn rừng mùi có nhằm chùm đầy hà đây để lo lo để miền được bia bạt chẳng khi nhóm bạn đang thuê cao dân phía lưu độc tổ đòn rồi bị sổ hay xông ở lưu lực xây tạm đàn đôi tỏ tơ bạt Welcome Dr. Robert Shaw Oh, good evening Good evening And I have Riti also here to ask you questions regarding the health issue Okay, the first of all, uh, I just watched your video and I, I wonder how did you become overweight and then lose that weight so fast? Okay, well, I didn't always have a bad lifestyle. About 10 or 12 years ago, I would walk to work and walk home would be about three or four miles every single day. And it didn't matter what the weather was like. I would still do it, winter, summer, it didn't matter. And... Uh, I had a fairly good diet at the time. I maybe perhaps ate chicken and fish, but I wasn't eating any beef. And then just something happened. I stopped the walking, and then uh, I added maybe a few beers a week at the local pub and a couple of burgers and some fries, not every day, maybe just a couple of days a week. And then I just, the, the weight gradually grew. And that's pretty much how I got to the size I, I was at the time. Yeah. Okay. How, how did I overcome that? Mm -hmm. Well, I kind of put together a program. I call it my reinvention action plan. Uh, it's the top 10 holistic programs for better chronic health care self-management. It's kind of a complicated uh, program, but I've kind of simplified it a bit. Uh, and the way I've done that is I put it into four steps. Uh, the first step is say on a sheet of paper, make a, a letter T, okay, and on one side you've got a to-do list, and on the other side a not to-do list. Okay, you want to reflect back on your own experiences, fill out both lists, and then go to the second step, and I like to use intentions rather than goals. It'll take me a long time to explain the difference, so I'm not going to do that this evening, but I wrote them out as intentions. Okay, I, and uh, let me just give you an example of some of the intentions that I, I've written out for that particular program. Okay, for example, one, I intend to improve the numbers in due course. And by numbers, I mean my cholesterol numbers, my blood pressure, and my weight. Two, I intend to lower my weight in due course. I intend to implement a portion control system I intend to drink one gallon of liquids per day. I intend to eat small meals every day. I'll skip a few. I intend to eliminate oils from my diet. I intend to maintain a vegan diet. And I intend to obtain the necessary resources needed to put my intentions into action. And then most important would be reasons for my intentions. So you need I, I suggest five powerful reasons why you intend to achieve those particular intentions. Here's a couple of examples of mine. Uh, lowering the important numbers is a step that will help me to avoid a repeat of those episodes that took place in December of 2009. Uh, maintaining a nutritional program that will help keep me alive is the most Important reason I have had it a nutritional po component to the RAP 10. RAP means reinvention action plan. 
And another one, nutritional and heart specialists have many years of in-depth experience studying the heart and nutrition. And not reinventing myself through these important lifestyle changes, uh, for me anyway, I, I thought it was kind of dumb because I, I, I made myself aware of what was going on and the knowledge at the time. And fifth, need is my driving force. And what one would need to do every day, especially those who struggle with, uh, you know, giving up smoking or exercise, is to keep that in the present tense by reviewing them daily. Every day you want to go over your intentions and you want to go over the reasons for your intentions. You might put them on a little flash card, a little three by five card, keep it in your pocket, post them on the refrigerator somewhere, or any, any little technique that you can think of. And for me, it's working quite well. Thank you. The, uh, the, uh, uh, you mentioned about the 10 programs mm -hmm. that make up what you have described. I, I don't know what you have told us is a 10 programs, yes or not. Is there anything that missing in that description that you just gave to us? Oh, like a couple of examples of what yes, the other about programs the, are? Yes, to make up your reinvention action plan, okay. your 10 programs that in it, right? Okay, sure. Can you make a brief uh, summary for it? Yeah, I'll go over them quickly. Yeah. One is called the, my physical rehab program or an exercise program. Another is a stress reduction program. And then I have writing as therapy program. I like to write. Uh, my medical program, of course, taking my meds daily and on time. Uh, social program, getting out more often, and smiling a little bit more often than I used to is helpful. Uh, workplace program. And another one that I came up during the program